based sort of question slash videos and um gonna be when did Allison lose it it so um as we all know in turn back the pendulum and whatnot Yuhi the Hogyoku he had performed experimentations on several captains and lieutenant route lieutenant the Shinigami and they got horrified, um, Kisuke got blamed, he got exiled, they got exiled too. Um, you know, the works, the works. Um, I assume you know the rest of Ryzen's whole story, uh, but suffice to say, here's where a possible point where he might have lost, which I find really interesting and I don't think I've seen a lot talked about. What if Aizen lost the moment he knew Ichigo even existed? Uh, let me explain. <laughs> so, Ichigo is basically this all-in-one child. Aizen knew this. He knew that Ichigo was special. Um, he knew about him ever since he was, before he was even conceived. So, when his father and mother met, Ishin and, um, What's his mom's name? Ichigo's mom. Can't remember her name at the moment. But suffice to say, when they met, he knew about that. He knew about the hollow, hollow light that bit her. He knew how Ishin lost his powers. He knew all about that. But here's my question. If Aizen knew of Ichigo's great potential, was there a point subconsciously in his mind where it's like, I want to be normal quote-unquote like I want to have a rival a challenge you know like I want to be I want to be the king of everyone but also like friendly with everyone or just normal um, the reason I say Ichigo is the cause of this is because he then realizes that oh wait there's someone who could possibly get to my level of power sort of deal, or there are these beings at my level of power, but, like, this Ichigo kid could naturally, like, I could see him get there, I could help him get there, sort of deal. Um, we know Aizen wanted to fight Ichigo, um, sort of like, a see how strong you become now, sort of thing, but only because I did, helped with it and whatnot. So I feel like a part of Aizen sort of in his own twisted way, cared for Ichigo, but only really because he wanted to see Ichigo grow, to see if he could reach up to his level, and then they both grow past that and evolve beyond together. He wanted a rival, a peer of equal power. He Subconsciously, he wanted that, because that's what it would, that would be what it's like to feel normal. If no one's at your level, how can you say you feel normal? And, um... Yeah, I feel like that's the sort of fundamental thing with Aizen. Him knowing that there's someone who could have had the potential to rival and then beat him was like this sort of subconscious beginning of like, maybe I should let them... He It's sort of like the start of, maybe I can get this kid to be strong, at possibly near my level. Maybe I can do this. It sort of, like, gave Aizen this new perceptive of possibilities, and then he decided to act on um, on it. Maybe not so, maybe a very small part of his carefulness was taken. <sighs> then again, you could also argue the fact that Aizen never lost at all. Um, we know that he went back to Mewking, um... Not sure why. I I'm gonna be honest. I'm not sure why. Um, he might be training in there, and he might realize that oh, you can sort of like maybe a location where I can somewhat avoid the damage if the soul society is attacked or something like that. Um, not sure if that's the case because Yuha still got there, but like it's Yuha. So. Um, I think Aizen, a part of him might be saying, this is a good strategic location to train. But another part of it might just be the fact of, oh, this is a good, um, 
um, how do I phrase this, um, Aizen basically didn't, ba Aizen basically knows that the Soul Society is gonna need him again, sort of deal, um, it's the equivalent of, it's the equivalent of someone letting you cheat off them, but every time you cheat off them, and then they act like, oh, you need me now, so, like, do this for me, or do this for me. They slowly and slowly get more favors, force you more, that sort of deal. But suffice to say, I feel like um, that's definitely an interpretation. Eisen wanted to go back in there because he's strategically planning something. And then there's this other reason of Eisen just didn't go back. He, he used Kyoko Soigetsu, it's fused with him now. Um, he stripped the entirety of the Soul Society into thinking he's in here. Well, I wouldn't say he stripped them, so much as they're convinced. They don't know for sure, but they're like, I, we think Aizen's in there, sort of deal. Um, but that leads back up to the point of when did Aizen lose. Um, I feel like Aizen's... Once Aizen got the Hogyoku, um, there was sort of this possibility of him to break past all of his limits via it, because he has this immense Reiatsu with potential and whatnot. Which, in turn, um, is relevant because, uh, said Riatsu and potential got him to the point that no one else with the Hogyoku would have, slash could have. Which makes me think that almost the entirety of the Gote 13 was surpassed in spiritual pressure by Aizen, or at the very least in potential by Aizen. Because he said, had anyone else not, had anyone else been using the Hogyoku with your whole um, trick, Kisuke, they would have died. Only I could have survived this. Um, so it brings me to this question of, did the Hogyoku lead him to eventually lose? Because then, once it, it's um, the idea of like, oh, I want to be the best. I want everyone to, I want the world to be mine sort of deal. But then it's like, once the world's yours, or once you can make the world yours, Would you still do it? It's like if someone said they hate the government. They hate the government. But then eventually they're given this gun and they, they're told, if you shoot this gun enough times, you will eventually kill the government. Um, would you still do it? So I feel like Aizen, on a steeper level, this Hogyoku is a the idea of... Him realizing that, oh, I have this great power, but I don't want it. I don't want it. It's like, once you get to a certain point, you have to ask, why did I want to get up to this point? Power, but without the person or the humanity to enjoy it. Um, another interesting thought is the fact that Aizen may have quit on trying to take over the Soul Society as the Soul King, because he knows the truth now, the deeper truth, which isn't the first sin that the um, noble courts mutilated the Soul King, basically, um, and then used him as a linchpin, and then introduced death to the world. No, I think that he learned the truth about Ichibe. So, you might be wondering, what does Ichibe have to do with this? Well, everything. Ichibe turned... Ichibe and the Zero Division turned Yuhabak's corpse into the new Soul King. Ichibe himself flat out says, like, eh, I would have missed Ichigo if we had to turn him into the Soul King, but it, hey, it's what we got to do. The Soul King isn't a position of power, it's not somewhere you want to be. It, Aizen himself says that no one is in the heavens, not yet. So, that includes Rayo, the Soul King. 
So I think he realized, oh shoot, me attempting to become the Soul King means that even if I win and get up to this point, they still might either A, be able to stop me and then turn me, they might be able to stop me or something, like force me to become this linchpin, or B, I will lose and then I'll get, what's the word, um, defamed, I should say maybe, or humiliated like that, which I definitely, I, which is, um, why I think Yuhabak got a very interesting ending. Um, but that's for a different day, discussion-wise. But suffice to say, Aizen is... Aizen has a myriad of reasons as to why and how he could have lost. You know, just in the first few episodes of the Iran cars and, like, the whole new arc of Hueco Mundo stuff, there are six different perspectives of Aizen. Aizen's a very complex character, and I feel that, um, there's a part of Aizen that we just won't understand, because Kubo is just vague, like, Dragon Ball's been vague. I think these anime writers think that this vagueness helps them, helps the YouTube community theorize, and then they get banked, so. Smart, but the vagueness ultimately means we don't really know, slash, can say for sure, um, I think, so I, I, well, I know there's a website where you can ask Kubo if you pay for it, but I don't know the link to it and whatnot. So if someone would be so kind as to point me to that, I'd most wi certainly be willing and able to take up a few questions to Mr. Kubo. Um, of course, uh, I would, rec of course, it would also be a matter of collective payment. So like, you pay a certain bar, I pay a certain bar. And then we bring both of our questions up. But um, other than that, stay safe. Uh, that wasn't even all the interpretations of Eisen. I know that you guys probably have more. Um, if you want me to talk about your interpretations and my other interpretations, please let me know in the comments below. Um, with that, I'm not... I, this video was certainly longer than I thought it would be, but uh, I'm glad I finally got this off my chest and whatnot, um, I'm hoping to make more videos on philosophy, the ethics of certain characters, um, I intend to do that with a list of characters that subscribers are gonna send to me, you, if you want to be a part of that group who's sending the list, um, join the Discord server, um, and with that, I will see you later, have a nice day.